Okay, fifth graders, this is chapter eight, review. And we're starting with the vocabulary review. Uh, what page is this? I think it's page 370, page uh, 370. Um, you, we've done this seven times before. So uh, there's not a whole lot I can say. Uh, use the word list right here, or the word bank if you wanna look at it, and answers uh, answer questions one, two, three, and four. Fill in the blank. Uh, five, six, seven, eight. Looks like it's true or false. Um, so I'm looking at number five here. <clears throat> what have we got? We've got um, six and three fifths times five and seven eighths, and they've got less than forty-two. So what is six and uh, three-fifths, if, if I was to estimate, what's that close to? It's close to seven. And how about um, five and seven-eighths? Seven-eighths is really close to eight over eight, which would be another one, so that would be equal to six. And so then we'd have what? We'd have seven times six, and that equals 42. And what have they got there? They've got uh, less than 42. Um, but let me point out something here. Six and three-fifths is less than seven. And five and seven-eighths is less than six. So the two numbers that I used to estimate, seven and six, they're close, but actually they're a little bit less. So um, what I wanna point out to you is that um, the answer to number five is, is true because they would actually be less than 42. The true answers, the actual answers, <coughs> if you were to actually um, do five and three fifths times five and seven eighths. It's going to be less than 42. All right. Uh, let's see here. Um, vocabulary. Suppose that you know, I'm reading number nine here, the answer to four fifths times and then in parentheses 20 times one and seven eighths. If you know the answer, explain how uh, commutative property and associative properties of multiplication can make you the, make the computation easier than find the answer. I'll let you guys actually find the answer, but I did want to point out, uh, I don't know if any of you actually memorized this, the commutative property, we've talked about that. Talked about that early on in the book. Um, you can change the order, and it's not gonna change the, the, prop, the, the property. It's not gonna change the answer. An associative property that has to do with grouping. You can change the grouping, and, and it doesn't matter. All right, so, um, but I will let you guys uh, find the actual answer to that. Go ahead and do it. Uh, next page I want you guys to do, uh, this would be set A and set B. That's all, all you need to do here. Um, so one through 12, it says find each product and it says use, uh, use number lines, fraction strips or drawings to help you. If you need to, you may not need to, I don't know. But I, I, uh, I looked at number one here and I thought I'll just show them a couple different ways. And remember when we're doing the, um, the chapter review, they call it reteaching. And I've said this every time. Um, in set A here, you look in your workbook pages 333 to 336 to help you uh, with these problems. And then set B down here, pages 337 through 340, and then 341 through 344. Anyways, back to number one here, four times three quarters. Um, let's take a look at this here for a moment. So one way I just, I kind of modeled it. I drew um, these little figures here and divided them up into, into four quarters. And so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm highlighting three of the four quarters. Okay, remember, if, if one of these, if it was all four quarters, what would that, that would equal? That would equal one. So four of these quarters, 
because here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four. Four of those would be equivalent to one. So you could count up how many quarters you have. What do we have here? We have three in the first one, and then, then another three, so that's six, and then nine, and then 12. So we have uh, 12 of those quarters. Um, and remember, each for, for every four, that's going to equal one. Well, how many times does four go into 12? It goes into 12 three times. And so the answer to um, four times three quarters is three. Okay. Another way to look at it, um, the number line here. I just drew a number line, one, two, three, and four. What are three of the four quarters? Well, this would be one, this would be two, this would be three. It's kind of obvious here. So again, the answer would be three. I, and then finally, we could just do it like this, you know, four times, or you could, four times three quarters. You know how to do these now. You gotta change four into a fraction. So that's four over one times three quarters. <coughs> can we do any cross canceling? Yeah, we sure can. Now I'm gonna do this um, without cross canceling and with cross canceling to show you you're gonna end up with the same answer no matter what. So this first one here, we'll do it with cross canceling. I'm looking at the, um, the two fours. That's the most, and that's really obvious. Four goes into four once, and four goes into four once. So now we just multiply straight across. One times three is three. One times one is one. So three over one is the same thing as three. Look at that. Amazing how we're getting the same results every time. Um, now we'll do, do it without cross canceling. So uh, four times three is 12. And then one times four is four. Well, what's 12 divided by four? Look at that. Once again, we get three. So the answer to number one is three. All right. Kind of a long way around the barn to do that, but I uh, just wanted to show you some different ways if it helps you guys, different ways to think about it, but uh, you can do it any way you want. Uh, you don't have to use models if, if you don't think you need to. Set B, it says, um, remember that the word of often means to multiply, and I've told you that before. So it says find each product. You guys can do that. Um, and solve that problem, those problems. Uh, I don't know, how about number seven? Let's look at number seven together here. Um, seven, it says Marco weighs 80 pounds. Okay, I'm gonna write that down, here's 80. And his bones make up about one fifth of his body weight. How much do his bones weigh? Well, we're gonna have to multiply 80 by what? One fifth. So that's gonna be 80 over one times one fifth. Oops, I put 81, not 80. I'm going to change my pin there. 80, there we go. Okay. Can we do any cross-canceling? It would make it a lot easier if we did. Uh, but we don't have to. We could just write 80 over, what, 5. What's 80 divided by 5? How many times does 5 go into 80? You know, I don't, I, you shouldn't, go, don't get in the habit of leaving these as an improper fraction. Go ahead and, and break them down into a mixed number. Well, five goes into eight once. What's left over? Three, bring down the zero. How many times does five go into 30? Goes six times, so the answer is 16. So uh, how much do his bones weigh? 16, I'm gonna put LB for pounds. Remember to label those. That kind of looks like 161, doesn't it? So I'm gonna put pounds. But remember LB, LB means pounds. Okay. All right, that's it. That's your only homework for today. Shouldn't take you guys too long. It is review. And um, 
That's it.